So they're saying you're his actual son in China. Yeah, there's a conspiracy theory that I'm Donald Trump's son. Casey Neistat had you as like the opener of one of his vlogs. Yeah. Well, look, we're gonna win big. And I literally got a Trump 2016 tattoo. When I met him, he's like, I gotta win for this kid. He's like, he got a tattoo. <laughs> I think you might've changed the course of history. The connecting theme of everything I do is silly. I did in 2018 get a Kanye 2020 <laughs> to like lighten people up. And then Kanye comes out, he's like Hitler. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> I met George Santos who just got indicted today. George, I texted you, you're my boy. I stand with you. That's my buddy. I think the key to happiness is living to your full potential. If you're not living to your full potential, you're not gonna be happy. Cursing is okay, we can curse. Uh, my uh, audience is predominantly eight-year-olds, so we can't curse. For real? No, I'm kidding with you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I didn't think you were being honest about the eight-year-olds, but yeah. the cursing. No, we can curse, we can curse. Okay, cool. There's a couple words that YouTube doesn't like, but... Yeah, yeah, no, I'm... I'm yeah. Are you savvy not, to those? Not that I'm going to be cursing every other way, I just wanted to, you know, yeah, check yeah. with you before. No, I appreciate that. Great fucking energy on this guy. Great energy. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I feel like I had to throw up the double biceps. I don't yeah, know. No, yeah, do it. Yeah. How are things, man? You've been traveling a lot. Yeah, I've been traveling a lot. How's the blow up? It, it, it's been great. Yeah. Yeah, it's been lucrative. Everything I've ever wanted is kind of happening. Uh, I'm on the news in China. Yeah. You say China with the uh, Donald Trump. Flag. China. I'm on the news in China. We call it China, right? A tremendous trade deals. Yeah. <laughs> So they're saying you're his actual son in China. Yeah, right? there's a conspiracy theory on the Chinese version of Twitter that I'm Donald Trump's son. And somebody from China who's a fan of mine sent me a clip and they like broke it down. It's like their version of Dateline NBC. And it looks like a James Bond movie. They have like a pinup. They're like Tr Eric Trump, Donald Trump Jr. Baron and then me. And they're comparing our facial features. And then they have a clip of me in Times Square screaming about fentanyl. You know, I'm like, the Hudson River is filled with fat. Clearly just silly, ridiculous nonsense. And then I say, we're going to make America great again. And then, boop, on the other side of the screen, they have Donald Trump saying, make America great again with us simultaneously. And they're like, that's proof. That's his That's son. all you need. Yeah. That's all you need is just a side by side. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's totally ridiculous, but I yeah. loved every second of Would it. Would you be happy if you were Trump's son? Or do you think you'd be like, ah, oh, shit, this is a lot to deal with? No, I like a lot to deal with. I like clout. You like Latinas? Nobody's, I like Latinas. Yeah, Love nobody's got with. more clout than Donald Trump. Right. Uh, yeah, no, and he's rich, of course. I, would, I wouldn't mind being Trump's son. Yeah. You think he would give you a small loan? A small loan of a million dollars. That was <laughs> the best. <laughs> Do you ever lose it? Do you ever lose the impression for a second where you're like, oh, that didn't sound like him? Um, not with Trump, but with some other people. Like I was just doing Obama. Uh, we're going to... Uh, need to do is sign a bill. Uh, now, ho hang on, hold on. Uh, it's not going to be easy, uh, but it doesn't need uh, to be hard. You know, so with him, that's more like an instrument. You're like, okay, I got to get this note. I got to get, but Trump is a lot of, you know, and yeah. plus practice makes perfect. I've been doing him more just because it's more lucrative. He's what a And you say, you keep saying uh, it's very lucrative and the Trump impressions have been going extremely viral. And I know you've been doing the cameos, but are like businesses hitting you up to promote their, promote their. Uh, yeah, that's been coming in, especially these last two weeks, different businesses to promote them on social media in the cameo. And then there's live gigs. I had people offer me, you know, I don't want to say facts and figures. My mom is like, don't, don't mention the amounts. So <laughs> I'll follow my mom's rules here. But uh, yeah, you know, people hire me to, you know, to go to their house on like July 4th and I entertain their family or whatever. Yeah, you know, it's incredible. It's, uh, <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, man. It, it pays to be uh, Donald Trump, eh? Yeah, it does. It, it just, look, I've been doing impressions since third grade and now it's paying off. You know, I didn't like, I went to college, but I was like, that, no, not for me. I dropped out. I pretty much did everything my way forever. And for like 10 years, I was just broke, but I just never gave up. And now it's paying off. That's awesome. I'm in those 10 years right now, the whole broke <laughs> 10 years part. Yeah. I think that's what I'm in, you know. We, we got two years marked down, so yeah, we'll keep... you'll get there. I was just saying, your energy, you got this great energy. That's all you, you need. It, man. All you need is energy and confidence. That's yeah. it. That's it. If yeah. you have talent, that's like a bonus. 
but energy and confidence, people will like you, doors will open, you know, as long as you're not an asshole. Right. Because that hurts a lot of people. Being, being an a, asshole? Being a dick. Yeah, I think I've hurt a, a girlfriend or two the first couple of being like that, you know? Yeah. But they hurt me back, so. Well, yeah, I mean, you live, you learn. Yeah. You know? The formula of being in New York, mm -hmm. being on the streets of New York. The best. Heavy liberal state. Yeah. And just you impersonating Donald Trump and you're, you're so good at it. You do it so, so well. Unbelievably well. <laughs> well, yeah, the city is like the other character. Right. I have so much. So I go into Times Square. It's like a gold mine. You have people dressed up like bootleg Mickey Mouse characters working for tips. You got the Brazilian chicks with the fake butts working for tips. You got... You know, you got the kids from PS 182 from up in Harlem trying to get on TikTok. You got every, it's an explosion of all these different types of people. And I just yeah. waltz in there and the magic just happens. A For lot sure. of this stuff I don't plan. I, I don't like too much structure, too much planning, too much script. I just kind of go out there. I'm in the character and things just happen. Yeah. Unscripted. Totally. That's unscripted. what it's all about now. Yeah. And people say, oh, you worry, you go into the city, do you ever get into anything? It's like, the whole story is, I've, my history with Donald Trump, goes, I've actually met Trump. Yeah, and he loved I met yeah. him in November of 2015. I, the day he announced he was running for president, back in June 2015, I thought it was like a joke. I thought it was like mm -hmm. a publicity stunt. People forget because he's been president for four years. Now he's in post-president. So in their minds, they see him as former president Donald Trump. But at the time, once again, people forget. He had just been roasted on Comedy Central. He'd had like three wives, 75,000 affairs. At that time, the idea, you know, because back then the rules were like, you can't cheat on your wife. You can't, you know what I mean? So it's like I, the idea of him running for president I thought it was just a publicity stunt for him to get more ratings on The Apprentice. So that night I went out and I was drinking with some comedian friends of mine. And this idea just hit me. Like it just came from the sky, boom, hit me in the head. And I looked at my buddy Mike, who was sitting across from me. I said, dude, what if I got a Trump 2016 tattoo? And he just goes, what? And he goes, dude, if you get that, I'll pay for it. So then, I don't know, like six shots later, we end up on McDougal Street, and I literally got a Trump 2016 tattoo. And people are like, oh my God, you ever get any shit? Anybody ever try to fight you? I literally, anybody, I've had this for, what, eight, nine years now? Any, I've been everywhere. I've been all over the city, all over the country. People ask about it, and I just tell them like a shortened version of what I just told you, and they're like, oh, that's hilarious. Like, no one's ever given me any shit. I think you might have changed the course of history. Well, I did, because when I met him, he's like, I got a win for this kid. He's like, he got a tattoo. <laughs> and that's a big deal. Okay, and I know deals. I wrote the art of the deal. That's a big deal. I can't let this guy down. I got to win the election. We stood there. He's like, I got to win the election next year for this kid. <laughs> and the rest is history. So do you think he's going to win again, personally? Um, of course, there's a chance with anything, right? I, I don't want to, because if I say no and he does, then I look like an idiot if I say yes and, or, and he doesn't. Um, and weird, I think he definitely has a shot. Yeah. In a weird way, I'm asking, are you going to get a Trump 2024 tattoo and is it going to come true? No, I could never get a Trump 2024 tattoo because this, once again, it's organic. This happened organically. And this Trump was just comedians. silly. People are like, are you going to cross it off and put it 24? I'm like, that takes away the magic from that moment. This was a moment that I'll never forget. Yeah. I met the guy who became president. If I got a Trump 2024, that's like when the sequel comes out. That's, that's that would be like good. Hangover 2. <laughs> Hangover 2 <laughs> sucked. I did in 2018 get a Kanye 2020, and now this one's more controversial than this one. Is it? Wait, I can't see. Is it really? Kanye 2020. Yeah, this was to like lighten people up. Like, look, yeah, I got Kanye. Kanye was always like, the you know... If anybody was like, Trump, huh? I'm like, I got Kanye. Yeah. Yeah, we all love Kanye. And then Kanye comes out. He's like, Hitler. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> My arm. But once again, I explain that and people just laugh. I don't know. So people don't get offended at the tattoo ever. Um, do people get offended when you're on the streets of New York impersonating Trump? 
Some people can't take a joke. We know this, right? So I'll get some dirty looks, but I've never gotten like a physical altercation or anybody really coming at me. And I do it on the train sometimes, the subway, the New York City place. public transit system. And it's just, you know. I feel like you would be very good in most comedians, but you'd be really good at like de-escalating with comedy. Oh, yeah. I mean, I worked at a moving company for years. I was always the foreman. And these are, a lot of these guys had just been out, gotten out of prison. Like that's the go-to job for ex-cons. You know, and here I am just a comedian with like this guy who just did 10 years. I don't even know what for. And I'm managing all these personalities. But yeah, I was really good at just getting everybody to just get along. I'd make them laugh. Da 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 da. Mm. Let's just get these boxes up these stairs, get tipped, and get out of here. So yeah, you know. So you do a lot of stand up comedy, and the impression with Trump has just, you know, gone extremely viral, especially in short form content. Yeah. Now you have the Donald J. Trump podcast, which. Yeah. Honestly, I was watching a study for this podcast <laughs> and st study for our mockumentary interview uh, after this or tomorrow. Uh -huh. um, and it's fucking hilarious. Thank bro. you. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. I, um, I had been doing these little clips and then, you know, I, you have a podcast and I have friends who've gone on, I won't mention their names, but people who are really successful now making millions of dollars. And I was like, Hmm, what if I just combined my skills with the Trump impression and turned it into a podcast? <laughs> Which I, what I love about the Donald J. Trump podcast is I, if I, whenever I just say the Donald J. Trump podcast, everybody starts, their cheeks go up. It's just from the jump. Yeah. They're like, what? The Donald po Trump podcast and you and you do, huh? So the curiosity is like, uh, and then people check it out and it's silly. It's crazy. I had, when I started out, there were no sponsors. So I made up fake sponsors. I, I was going to ask, because there was like Trump brain? Well, Trump, Trump brain, brain, like, you know, Alex Jones has his brain force, and Joe Rogan has what, the... Probably like lion man. Yeah, all that stuff. So I, did, I made up Trump brain, and I'm like, but you have to be dumber than me, because if you're my intelligence and you take it, you'll die, because Trump brain makes you smarter. But if you're already as smart as me, which very few people are, but if you are, you'll take it and you'll immediately have an aneurysm and die. And then... um. I, I was, uh, have you ever heard of wrap snacks? Yes. They're um, potato chips with wrappers on them and they're called wrap snacks. Yes. So they have the Biggie Smalls wrap snacks. They have, you know, the little Baby, you know, everything from back in the 80s, 90s till now. They have a little Boosie Louisiana Heat. That was the one that I saw in a store and I'm like, I just, it just, all, like the tattoo idea, it just came to me. And I'm like, that's going to be a sponsor. So I'm like, we're sponsored very strongly by wrap snacks. Specifically, Little Boosie's Louisiana Heat. Do we love Little Boosie? We love Little Boosie. <laughs> okay. Didn't Trump free uh, Bobby Shmurda? Yeah, or who did he free? I, I don't think he freed Bobby Shmurda, but he freed a lot of rappers, which was <laughs> so funny. Bro, he was loved by uh, hip hop culture before the. Uh, he yeah, I mean, you hear everybody say that. It's all cliche. Everything's right. cliche. I just think that. Um, yeah, but. I guess things changed and there's perceptions or whatever. I just, the, the podcast isn't even political. It's just, it's just. Pokes fun. It's just, not even poke fun. It's just, it's absurd. The whole world has become so absurd that the Trump podcast is just, I think, a continuation of that. No, I'm going to get all my news from your Donald J. Trump <laughs> podcast. That's where I'm going to consume yeah. any. <laughs> you know, and maybe I'll sneak some points in there. Not even political points, just stuff about like, if I talk about like Barron, we caught him with the vape. We caught him with the vape, so I took him to the hood, the ghetto, and I said, look, they're all struck out on heroin, and they all started with vape, right? We call it vape, and, you know, just little right. stupid shit, but, you know, that's the bad example of an actual lesson, but there are some things, I try to give it, because I want it to, and it keeps growing, and... It's it, dope. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. It's, you know, it's never going to go away. It's always going to be an avenue of content. Oh, yeah. It's a skill you have. Speaking of skill you have third grade doing impressions that's an early start to like start a comedy career almost yeah what was well, the first impression and like what george was... w bush so just straight presidential i like it yeah it started i guess back then that's i george didn't w. think bush. of that no i would watch saturday night live and i would watch daryl hammond he's okay. like my idol when it comes to impressions welcome back to who wants to be a millionaire because <laughs> it wasn't just an imitation there was something in his eyeballs where he made you like, you didn't even have to know who the person was. Like, I didn't know who Regis Philbin was at like 
nine. But the way he did rages, I'm like, ah, that's funny. And so that's what, and I just loved how you, he was able to become another person. So I went to school and I would start doing them and they weren't even good, but I would do them and kids would laugh. But then when I got to middle school, my voice changed a little bit and they started to get good. And then the rest is history. I just never stopped. So you started with impressions and then you started doing comedy uh, stand up after that? Yes. Yeah. After I graduated high school. I looked at it as like a job. It's like, okay, I graduate and then I'll start. So then that summer I went to an open mic and the rest is history. Do you have any close comedy friends that pit you on game a lot? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's how you get ahead in the comedy right. game. It's literally, yeah. That's, is the New York scene your scene? Yeah, not as much as before. I'm doing more of the road now because you could easily get caught up in New York. For many years I was like, I was doing all the clubs in New York. I was known in New York, but I wasn't, I'd done a little TV. I got on the Dana Carvey first impression show. He had an impersonation contest show. I did a pilot with Wanda Sykes, but I wasn't known in wider than New York until I got on TikTok. And then more recently, I really blew up like a month ago when Trump got indicted. That was like mm -hmm. the big thing for me. This episode is sponsored by Rebel. Rebel has a smell-proof bag that's not only smell-proof, but it comes with a built-in rolling tray. We got four Ziploc baggies, a UV glass stash jar, and two... Oh, and two dube tubes. Not only does it have all of those accessories and is completely smell proof, completely smell proof, it also has a TSA grade combination lock so no one can open this unless you want them to. You'd have to tell them their code. My code's 000 because I'm an idiot. We love this bag. This bag is literally the best. We use it everywhere. Mr. Go Get the Gas uses it. And not only that, you know we're all about saving money. Uh, we got a code for you. Wet Slap 10 for 10% off your purchase. W E T S L A P one zero. Also, there's a 30 day satisfaction guarantee. If you don't like the bag, send it back. You will love the bag. Also, there's a lifetime warranty. If something happens with the bag, you let them know they'll take care of you. These are selling fast. We have this ad read a lot. These are, these are flying off the shelves. If they're on shelves, they might not be on shelves. They might be on a floor or in a box. They're flying out of a box. Thank you rebel for sponsoring this episode. As always love you guys back to the program. Casey Neistat had you as like the opener of one of his vlogs. <laughs> well, look, we're going to win big. We're going to win big and uh, it's all fake news. Yeah, I saw Casey and well, really, we saw each other and everybody who had a camera there was like Trump wig glued to me. And I just sort of seized the moment. And I was like, I spoke to him for a few seconds before. I'm like, I'm a big fan of yours. I love your stuff. And he's like, just, yeah, man, just go ahead, do it. Do just some stuff for the camera. Canon 90D just holding it. Yeah. You know? And I spoke to his people and they actually messaged me after they're like, Casey's going to post you're in his video today. And they, I gave them my info and they tagged me. Super cool. Um, yeah, it was, it was crazy. That day, the atmosphere there was like being on mushrooms. I don't know if you've ever done mushrooms or any I sort of hallucinogenic anything. The atmosphere, it was, and it was similar to when I first met Trump. The energy around him is always larger than life, insane. But... I mean, there was hundreds of media people, hundreds of cops, hundreds of anti-Trump people, hundreds of pro-Trump people, all in this tiny little park across the street, across the street from the courthouse. And everyone's screaming at each other. There's Antifa. There's all, and then there's all the whack jobs that have yeah. nothing to do, don't believe in either side, but they just gravitate towards, oh, look, what's all that fuss? And it's New York. So yeah, it's going to be so, I, and I'm just in the middle of it getting content and um, it was it was amazing. It was like mind blowing. I I noticed you kind of float in and out of it on accident. Are you Donald Trump so much that you're losing Jason Scoop a little bit? Yeah, that like happens. In your soul? That happens. I remember this is gonna sound insane, but in middle school I started watching Seinfeld, and I started to do a a Kramer impression. Oh yeah, I love and I literally started to, you know, middle school, you're figuring out who you are. I got lost in Kramer. And I would literally like w slide into class and, and everything. And it wasn't until he had like his racism scandal at the Laugh Factory. I don't know if the audience is old enough to remember, but he had a racism scandal. And I was did? like, oh no. Well, he screamed the N word at the Laugh Factory while performing comedy on stage. And then I was like, uh oh. And I dropped the, the, the Kramer impression. And I'm like, I, I always think if that didn't happen, would I still be Kramer? I could still, I might have, st 
<laughs> he might have saved you in a weird roundabout way. Yeah. Racism saves. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it saves, like that Chappelle joke. He, is this, but he saves. He saves. <laughs> you did. You said you did a couple shows. I knew you were on uh, First Impressions, and you, yeah, and you won uh, ten thousand dollars. Yeah, I won ten thousand bucks. It was gone in three weeks. I was gonna say, what'd you spend it on? Honestly, just booze and Ubers. I I, yeah. I I bought like three tangible items, like a pair of shoes and jeans. Everything else went just went to alcohol. I thought I was rich. I'm like, I'm rich, and I was buying like everything top shelf. I was buying all my friends. I was an idiot. I was like 25 at the time. If I, that happened now, I would you know put it on the S and P 500 or something. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I was an idiot. Yeah. I mean, Ubers uh, Ubers cost too much nowadays. Yeah, especially in New York. Yeah. <laughs> and they can never find you. I feel like. They do, a, they do a good job for what the madness of... I've been to New York once. Yeah. Did you come I back? went on the subway like six six to seven times. Mm -hmm. And uh, every single time, like one guy was like recording my girlfriend with his phone. Uh, I did a staring contest with this homeless guy face to face. <laughs> uh, this construction worker like told me to get up out of my seat and I wasn't going to get out of my seat. Yeah. Good and I was like, ground. I'm like, do, do people pick on me for a reason? Like why? Do they know I'm not from New York? They could probably, you could always tell when someone's not from New York. Yeah. I don't even know what it is, but you could just tell. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, well, did you overall hate the experience or? No, the food was amazing. Yeah. But the subway, that's how I uh, commuted. Right. And I'll be honest, the subway really did creep me the fuck. I was how so, long ago I feel like was a pussy. This? Um, this was five or six months ago. Maybe, oh. no, no, more like eight months, eight months. Okay. I thought yeah. you were going to say five or six years. And then no. I was going to say, that was heaven compared to what it is. Okay, no, so this was recent. Now. No, yeah, the subway is every... And people who hate on New York, like, for political reasons, and they're like, no, it's just a hellhole. And that. It's like, it's not as bad as people think, but it's certainly crime has skyrocketed. And it's the quality of life has gone down, but it's still awesome. There's still an energy there. There's still yes. an ambition there. Most people have, like, three, four, five, six jobs. Everyone's hustling. Everyone's motivated. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, that's the place to be, you know? There was a lot of beautiful things about New York. A lot of beautiful people. A lot of beautiful ladies yeah. in New York. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gay, so I don't... Are you really? No, I'm not. Oh. But thank you, though. That you was very nice of you. You got me. That's good. <laughs> you said it in such a nice way. You're like, <laughs> oh, okay, good. Good for you. I love gay. Gay is in. Gay is in. I'm... Gay is... I just was talking about this with them. I was like... If I was gay, my podcast would be huge right now. Gay is huge. I actually pretended to be gay on Facebook in 2019. Pretended? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, here's the thing. And I love talking about this because, um, first off, pretending to be gay. I, I got the idea from this rapper, Daylight, who was a battle rapper. And he's like, yo, I just started to pretend to be gay. He's like, because they got all the power right now. And I started winning every rap battle because I would talk about sucking dicks and shit. And, and this goes back to, with the tattoo, people think, oh my God, I'm sure you got beat up. I, I guess I'm immune to almost every social rule these days because almost, pretty much nobody got offended, but I was kind of trolling how weird things had gotten. I did this in 2019, early 2019, and there were some, there was a gay guy who was super, super woke, like woke, woke, like woke, 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 woke. And he was like, you're not gay. You have a girlfriend. And I typed back, I said, do you mean to tell me that in 2019, I can't be gay and have a girlfriend? And I trolled him so hard because I knew how he thought. He was like, oh my God, you know what? You're right. I'm so sorry. Like, that's how crazy yeah. the wokeness had gotten. But um, no, this gay comic even wanted to book me on a gay show. He ended up not doing it because he thought, which rightfully so, that he might have gotten some blowback. But it was just, it, I was just being silly. The The connecting theme of everything i do is silly i don't have any you know what i mean like i just want to make fun of how yeah. of serious people right and you don't even have to say that because you're you don't even have to like yeah. when you watch your stuff it's like yeah it's just silly yeah but there's very it's very rare that people don't take a simple joke as a joke yeah but it yeah. plays into my favorite like if i do biden uh like if i make fun of biden if I do a Biden impression, Biden, super hardcore Democrat people get angry. If I do Trump, 
some people who like Trump are like, oh, okay. But some people who like Trump or think I'm making fun of him. And then I have Democrats and Republicans arguing in the comments. I never chime in. I never chime in. And I'll just comment, comment, comment. And it adds hundreds, sometimes thousands of comments, which boosts my videos. You ever heard of 48 Laws of Power? Yeah, okay. for sure. Yeah, smart guy. Mm -hmm. Don't commit. It's a, he says, only a fool rushes to take a side. He goes, if you play it neutral, both sides compete for your affection mm -hmm. and you become the master of others. So, you know, I just, my, my only allegiance is to funny. Yeah. That's it. There's a, there's a law in that book um, saying enemies make the best of friends or... Uh, use become, your enemies. Use your, if you don't have enemies, make some. Because they say friends end up getting jealous. They end up becoming a hater. But an enemy who was an enemy, who you are like, all right, no, you good. Now you respect each they'll other. They'll always, well, they'll always feel insecure because at one point they were an enemy. So they'll try extra hard for your acceptance. And yeah. Yeah. I think uh, on a broad scale, I mean, the most, some of the most successful um, internet celebrities, content creators, Logan Paul and KSI. Let's be enemies, talk shit about each other's families, do these boxing events. That yeah. sell people want to see people fight. Yeah. UFC is huge. It's fun to watch people fight. Fighting videos on Twitter, eat it up. Yeah. Cool. Subway videos, eat it up. Let's and then after they're done fighting, let's join forces and then make trillions of or millions of dollars yeah. selling a Gatorade, glorified Gatorade. Right. And people yeah. keep falling for it. Like a lot of these beefs, like you said, are like orchestrated. Yeah. You know, like rap beefs. Like, do you think Gajillionaire, when Kanye and Drake were beefing, do you think either of them were really mad at each other? They were trying to sell records. Yeah. Which I guess has changed from the 90s, because back in the 90s, they really did kill each other. <laughs> but then people wisened up, and they're like, oh, we don't have to kill each other. It's true. Just it was, make money. It was always West versus East. Yeah. It was always West. And that's before my time, so I never got to live through that, but... And the NBA, it's funny how the NBA is set up West for season. Our sports are set up regionally. Yeah. And then gangs just kind of followed with that too. Yeah. 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 The West side, you know, they can all catch a bullet. <laughs> right. Should I say that? Is that, will that get me monetized? Too much? Eh, we get at it. I went to California once. What do you, you like California? I love <laughs> Los Angeles. What part of it? Just in general? Just like Hollywood and. Every time I'm there, good things happen. I, I yeah. went there. I auditioned for First Impressions. I got it. I went back. I won $10,000. I did the Wanda Sykes show. That night, I was on a show with Dave Chappelle. Um, you know, just all these amazing experiences. Um, I also find, and I'm going to sound cocky saying this, but LA, they're really laid back. It's all about New York. It's all, everything's quick. So yeah. if a New Yorker goes to LA, you could just clean up with everything because you're so used to like wheeling and dealing that I'm like, it's like, oh my God, it's like taking candy from a baby down here. You yeah. know, it's, yeah, but I love it. I love the weather. I love the lack of humidity, which is one issue. Florida's dope. Yeah, no that's liquid. the one thing, Florida, it's like a smack in the face with the humidity. But um, yeah. Yeah, there's times I leave my house and I just sit in my car and boom, <laughs> back sweat. Mm -hmm. Back sweat, butt sweat, all types of sweat. Yeah. But you know what happens. You know. Yeah. So what's next for you? Meaning the Donald J. Trump podcast is, you know, it's gaining a lot of viewership. Mm -hmm. The clips are always going to be great. Mm -hmm. The 2024 election's happening. Yeah. So you're very relevant. Yeah. So just keep with this for a little, for the impressions. But what's your end goal? Is there an end goal in mind? So my answer to your question, because I used to have like, I want SNL. I want this. I want that. My answer to your question goes back to one of the first things I brought up, which was, you go out into Times Square. I'm not sure what's going to happen, but let's see. The tattoo. Literally, once again, I very purposefully said it just came to me. Like, it just, it was as if it, the idea was like smacked into my head. So what I'd say this is I'm done having these overarching goals. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing and have the faith that what's, that good things will continue to happen. I met George Santos, who just got indicted today. George, I texted you. You're my boy. I stand with you, George. Congressman George Santos. 
the known as the serial lying congressman. What happened with with him? Why is he indicted? Well, once he shows up in court, they say they're going to unseal it. Right now, it's a sealed indictment, so we don't know. But that's my buddy, and um, you know, I ended up meeting him through people that I met through doing a live Trump gig, and then I meet Santos, and we hit it off, and he invites me to the Capitol. Next thing you know, I'm in the capital of the United States with George Santos, the alleged serial lying congressman, and I get a video from him and things just explode even further. So that's what I mean when I say, like, I didn't wake up that morning being like, I'm going to meet Congressman George Santos, and then he's going to invite me to the capital of the United States, and then I'm going to get whatever notoriety. It just happened. So that's how this business works for sure. Yeah. Just the creative business, yeah. Comedy creation, yeah. It's like all of a sudden you'll get an email, yeah, exactly. Like this, hey, you, you emailed me to do your podcast, dude. And now you I'm answered in. so quickly, and I was like, "Yes, this is dope." I just, I'm always on the ball. So fun to collab with people who yeah. want to collab. I'm always on the ball, and like I say, I believe in just working hard and whatever's going to happen, happen. But funny leads the way. Yeah, funny leads the way. It's like, oh, uh, this company wants me to sponsor their video. This, but I can never forget to keep making funny videos because that's what puts that's what the viewers and the subscribers and everything came from in the first place. So, when's the Joe Rogan episode happening? Hey, we'll see. Yeah, we shall see. That's an email. Yeah, that's, that's another email. Yeah, does he? Do you know if Joe outreaches or does Joe? Do people? Just... No, it's like it's like a Saturday Night Live thing, and they've seen me. They saw me the year that I did the Dana Carvey show. I was, um, and what I mean is how I tie it into the Joe Rogan thing is things that big. It's not just like, who is, you got to be around and make your way to them. You have to be almost somewhat a step, obviously established for Rogan or whatever. But um, I had this five minute showcase for Saturday Night Live, which was like a pre-audition. And it was in front of a live audience and I was working out my five minutes all over the city. And every time I did my five minutes, audiences were just dying. I like the, I've never heard laughs that loud. And everybody was like, dude, you're going to get it. You're going to get SNL. This is crazy. Your life's going to change. And then the, the showcase, it was an all live audience. They were from this college right next door. I think it was like Pace or something. And college students are known for being extra sensitive with comedy and they just weren't feeling it. I had a joke I, where I have a character who was a terrorist who quit. He quit terror and he became a motivational speaker. So I come out and I do the accent. The second I did the accent, they were like, that's inappropriate. How could you do an accent? I was just like, you know, boys and girls, life is not about blowing up yourself. It's about blowing up your self-esteem. Huh? <laughs> Say it with me. Yes. you know. And they, and, it's, how do you know they're already against you? Is it just their expression? Oh, I mean, they weren't they... laughing. And they looked angry. Is there a way to pick it up? Do you, it, like, when that happens on stage, when that happened on stage, did you pick it back up or were you like, oh, let's just get the fuck out of here? So normally, if it wasn't the pressure, the weight of Saturday Night Live watching me, yeah. But that, like, I'm with a bunch of performers, confident people. Everybody was like, like before. <laughs> Everybody was wiping the sweat off yeah. their head. I mean, this is, this is it's like the cream of the crop. At least at that time, you know, the web, the internet's exploding. People can do things. Like, but five or six years ago, however long ago this was, this SNL, and it still is, it's the biggest comedy institution in the world. I mean, Pete Davidson ended up with Kim Kardashian. Uh, what more do I have to say? Right. It's the biggest thing in the world. And um, so being that, because I could normally, if, it, if something bombs, I could dig my way out. Yeah. But boy, that I was like, okay, okay. And I powered through it. But in my head, that's another terrible thing. Your brain and your mouth need to be on the same page for comedy to work. My mouth was doing my set, but in my mind, I'm just like, this is it. I blew it. I blew it. And who knows? They could come call in tomorrow. Another email could come. Hey, we want to see you again or whatever, you know? So I sound like a broken record, but this is one of my favorite things to talk about because it's really changed my life. Mm -hmm. When it comes to uh, kind of like scary tasks, mm -hmm. uh, not confusing anxiety and excitement. And there's that viral clip of uh, Dan Cook yeah. uh, on a podcast talking about that. There's a fine line between anxiety and excitement. And it's so fine that you start believing your, your excitement is anxiety. And uh, 
it's true. I I view my anxiety as excitement because that's truly what it is. Yeah. I'm just so anxious that like, am I going to win or am I going to lose? Yeah. And it's really kind of like flip the switch. Usually I'm pretty nervous during a podcast in general. We've had some pretty big guys. On, we've had uh, Sneeko on who's super like YouTube clouded up. Right. Now he's kicked off YouTube. Yeah. But I wasn't nervous for that show because I just I'm like, I'm excited. Yeah. And then also I'm, I've conquered this thing and comedians are great at this. Mm-hmm. I used to want I used to be so afraid to show myself mm-hmm. and now I show myself yeah. and it's like, if you don't like it, then like there's something wrong with your perspective because I'm not going to dislike you for who you are. Yeah. So I'm just going to be my complete self. Yeah. Like me or don't like me. If you don't like me, I understand there's some sort of shift. There's a reason in yourself why you don't like me. Right. Yeah. Well, authenticity sells. Right. A lot. Most people don't realize that. They try to be something they're not. My buddy, George Santos, he told we were on the phone the other day. And he was like, yeah, he goes, I lied about graduating from college. He goes, I should have been proud that I made it this far without college. He goes, but I, yeah, he said to me, he's like, I lied about it. And it, it really messed me up in a lot of ways. And it caused me a lot of whatever. And I would say, if you look at, because everybody talks about cancel culture. I pay very close attention to who gets canceled. And some celebrities seem pretty much immune. And that's because they're like, this is who I am. If you remember Charlie Sheen when he had his breakdown with the drugs, when he was like tiger blood, he's like, are you bipolar? He's like, I'm by winning. A guy like him was always like, yeah, I'm, I date three porn stars. I do cocaine. I, you know what I mean? And, and, and so he never got, he had a Super Bowl. If you look at his rap sheet, what he's been arrested for, what he said, what he's done, what he's been on tape, but he's always been like, yeah, I'm a fucking rock star smoking a cigarette. I like that. I bang out seven gram crack rocks and he got a Super Bowl commercial. So the American people like authenticity, but everybody's so afraid to get canceled. That's why I love the internet because you don't have a boss. Yeah. And I could, I feel like I could breathe, Mm -hmm. you know? There's comedians like Dave Chappelle. Damn. (laughs) And then there's comedians like Kevin Hart both respectively amazing, amazing careers. I love them both. Yeah. You know, I look up to them in a lot of different ways. But Kevin Hart is more industry. Yeah. Dave Chappelle's more like comedian's heart of the streets. Yeah. I'll stand up for what's really funny, yeah. even if it's distasteful. Yeah. And then now Kevin Hart is hilarious, but he's in the system of family and friendly, which is cool. But that's a decision you have to make further down the road, especially when you get to that size. Well, if you look at my arms, you can see I've clearly decided the Chappelle route. I'm not, I'm not trying to get a Disney deal. I'm not trying to. I don't want the Disney deal. Yeah. Um, and I'm very proud that I've been able to stick to my guns because I could have given up so many times. It's so many times I could have given up, but I didn't. And now that things are working out, I really am proud of myself. But I didn't realize now that things are working out, it's like nonstop work non-stop like i'm on the phone i'm wheeling and dealing yeah yeah oh yeah it's a lot but um i'm thankful for it it's like you said the anxiety and this uh, but it's yeah. like but i'm like this is what i wanted what's the what's the biggest turnaround moment where you almost like decided it was quit um i mean a million like that snl thing that was that was a blow but that wasn't i don't know it's just times where I can't think of a specific instance, but I remember what really hurt was one time my mom, this is like five, six years ago, she was giving me a ride to the train station. She's like, you know, you've been at this for a while. But I knew it's like, no, I know I'm funny, but it's just other things getting in the way, you know, yeah. like. Yeah, life happens. Yeah, life and happens. You- I used to drink a lot more. I used to party a lot more. See, because girls and stuff and booze, and I'm not blaming girls, but I'm just saying I'm blaming myself. It When you're in the New York City scene, it's so easy. Like, there are guys who have checked out. I could tell they've che- they've given up, but they're they're getting girls. So they still, per- they'll perform until they're, they croak to get girls, to party, to drink. Something in me flipped where I'm like, Okay, forget alcohol. Well, alcohol. Well, when we party, when we're when we succeed, um, getting laid, all that, all that stuff prevents people. It clouds people's mind. You could do that when you're a star. 
you know? And that's that. How many do comedians get a lot of girls? I don't want to sound like cocky, but but yes. That's dope. Girls like funny guys. I'm scared of because listen, I can be funny, but I'm I'm alternate funny and I haven't like honed in on what makes me funny sometimes. Yeah. So the podcast, I'm I'm goofy. I'm mm-hmm. more so goofy. Yeah. Like I could be next to a really funny person and have a really good time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm scared of funny guys. Because, you know, a funny guy at work starts right. to get close to your girl. Maybe, you know, maybe he's a five. Maybe he's just not very good looking, right. but he'll do it. It's definitely a cheat code to life yeah. in general. Um, but you got to think about a lot of people are funny because, I don't know, maybe some like, I don't know, things happened in life. And I don't know. I have i don't know where I line up on that. Like, I do. How many girls are you fucking, Jason? Currently, zero. But. Over the course of my life, it's it's up there. You could say triple digits. But oh. yeah. But comedians do fuck. Yeah. yeah. But uh like I said. Okay. Let me give you a good let me give you a good thing here. I like about thing. ten years ago, I'm in Broadway Comedy Club and I'm in the bar. And there's a kid and he's, you know, he was like popping. He was like and he was on MTV's Guy Code. And he was sitting right there and he's looking at his phone. His name is Pete Davidson. And I'm sitting across from him. And he's like, people are like, oh, congrats on Guy Code. Okay, television. And he's like, oh, yeah, you know, it's just for Twitter followers. He's like, every episode that there is, it's like a thousand new followers. And I remember thinking in my mind, I was like, dude, you're on TV. Everybody wants to be on TV. What are you going to talk about Twitter? But he had the right people in his ear. Now he doesn't have a Twitter. But he was got SNL. And so a guy like him was very disciplined and focused. And I, I could tell that he, he wasn't scrounging around. You know what I mean? Because things were happening. And, there, and he had people in his ear. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't bang the waitress. Don't do this. Don't just don't do that stuff. And he didn't. And then he got Kim, once again, like I said before, he got Kim Kardashian. So the thing is, if you hold off on the partying and everything for a Mm -hmm. while, when you get to a certain level, you could literally do, you could live like a king. I had a 420 episode, which was the last episode I recorded. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't gotten high for about five months. And I got high (laughs) on the episode with a couple, you know, goaded up Zaza goats. Okay. It was a good time. Nice. Um... But I was talking about how this podcast wouldn't have been possible if I kept smoking weed the way I did. See? Because I was so happy and complacent, which is great. Yeah. If you need to be happy in your situation, fuck yeah. Yeah. But I wouldn't have been able to dream chase. Yeah. I'd be so happy with just being high and having a hundred listeners. Right. Cool. My friends listen to me. you think you're happy, but were you really happy? Well, as soon as the high worn off. No. You realize you weren't fulfilled. Yeah, I'd be like, how am I going to stop smoking so much? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people tell themselves they're happy. Right. But they're not. I, I think the key to happiness is living to your full potential. And full potential is many different things to many different people. But if you're not living to your full potential, you're not going to be happy. And that'll manifest itself in different ways. There's um, this, it's a, in Japanese, it's called k- Kaizen or Kaizen. Um, and I can't remember exactly what it's translated into in English, but the meaning behind it is constant improvement. If you're, if you wake up every day with the goal of constant improvement, you will succeed this, you, or you'll have this like happiness. You'll walk with this certain happiness that you'll feel invincible, hmm. not invincible in a, I can't die way or mm-hmm. I, I don't bleed. Nobody can hurt me. Mm-hmm. But If I'm always improving the friendships around me, if I'm always improving my fitness, my health, if I'm always improving my dream, I'm invincible. Nothing can truly hurt me. Of course, there's events that can, but... Right. But it's the power of the mental. Yeah. The mental is everything. Right. You. Everybody gets those roles. Mm -hmm. Those weeks or sometimes months where you're in a role. Yeah. Your health is right. Your career is like doing what you kind of was expecting it to do. Uh And you're just like, fuck. (laughs) <laughs> and then the next couple of months you start smoking a little weed right there's a yeah, love you gotta interest stay with it yeah. a love interest that's a girlfriend and everything and right now like i said single 
I, I don't have time. I don't have time for any of yeah. that stuff. And, um, and momentum. Momentum is so important. Yeah. But I have, because I do so much Trump and Biden political stuff, and I have, I've set myself up in a really good position because, like you said, the election is heating up. It's next year, but the debates are going to happen. Everything. Who knows what's going to happen? Trump is on trial. It's just, I'm, I'm like uh, kind of following it. Wherever it goes, wherever the story goes, I'll have that to play with. Yeah. And it's awesome. Yeah, I mean, politics is a good thing to follow and a good thing to make a mockery of because yeah. a lot of people are warped into that world and they can't get out of it. So when they do see something funny that makes them feel a little bit better about it, right. they might get warped into And just your loosen world. up, exactly. And just loosen, loosen up. up. You've, probably like, gained, you've probably gained more, you know, I think you've had a better campaign for Trump than Trump I do ever. see a lot of comments. People are like, oh, man, I, I think I like Trump now. Because my right. friend Ron was like, you humanize him and call it whatever you want. But I just do my thing. And if people, I just, I, one of my missions, I guess, is would to, to, to loosen people up. Because people are so, have such, like a friend of mine said a great thing about Trump. He goes, Trump is the most beloved, hated person on the planet. He goes, people either love him or they hate his guts. There's almost no in between. And just in politics in general, I find a lot of people who dedicate their life to politics, it's this some other underlying thing going on. Like, like I said before, if you're not fully happy, it manifests itself in other ways. And it could be just watching Fox News or just watching MSNBC and talking about it constantly. And, you know, and it's like, and it's so divisive. And both sides are playing the same game. Those guys are the bad guys. We're the good guy. But you're yeah. saying they're the bad guys so you could hide what you're doing right here. Look over there. And both sides are doing that. Mm -hmm. You know? So I think, uh, you know, go outside, pet your dog, you know, go jogging, turn off cable news. Yeah. And turn on the West Lab. Yes. The West Lap Podcast. That's right. And um, the Donald J. Trump Podcast. Yeah. Uh, I want you to kind of plug in uh, some of your socials right now mm -hmm. uh, before we cut it off. So Sure. So you could follow me on Instagram at Jason Scoop and YouTube and TikTok at Jason Scoop Comedy. And those are the three main places to find me. And uh, yeah, a lot of content every single day. It was uh, amazing having you on. Um, I'm going to see if we can make this uh, mockumentary happen yeah. um love you guys thanks for tuning in sub subscribe you fucking bozos what's going on you gotta subscribe. hit like and you gotta sm they call it smash right smash the subscription button and hit the notification bell and you gotta do it so struggling because the haters and losers they don't want you to smash that button but uh, and i learned smash from baron he says dad you gotta say smash it's gen z and I have a tremendous relationship with Gen Z that I could tell you. There's one right there. There she is. <laughs> Unbelievable. And it's great. I've got people getting tattoos. It's tremendous. And uh, yeah, smash the, you got to watch the show. You got to stay informed. And you got to do it so strongly that I could tell you, okay? All the cameras. All so the cameras. strongly. Thank you guys very much.